You know that great standby program from Holland America? It offered cabins for $49 a day? Well, it just got more complicated, but we're going to explain it today. A year ago, the HAL standby program didn't exist. Last fall, they rolled out the program on a trial basis. In March of this year, buoyed by the results, they exploded the breadth of the program to about 180 sailings out of six different destination areas. It was a huge deal. And my wife and I jumped on the program and booked two trips. But before we could even take the first trip, Holland America has now changed the program again and it affects us. They've added a second standby option. In today's video, I'm going to explain what they've changed and why it might be more exciting for you to consider. I'm also going to explain how these new changes affect people who've already booked trips on the old rules, including some things that you might not have considered. For those of you who don't know us, we are Ken and Ellen, a retired couple who are trying to see as much of the world as we can while we still can. And our channel is designed to help you make the most of your travel window. Before I explain the changes that Hal's made to the standby program, let me make sure you understand the original features. Holland America chose six departure areas all in the US or Canada. From these locations, they opened specific standby cruises for a price of $49 per person per day plus taxes and fees. It's not all locations and it's not all cruises. To book, you need to pay up front somewhere between seven and two days before sailing, they'll let you know if there are open cabins and they'll assign you one. If no space is available, you get the money back. There are many more details and some risks to consider. If you want to know all the specifics, check out this video that I did on the program. So is the program working? Absolutely. Through comments to this channel and through Facebook, we know of a great many cruisers who have used the program. Not all got on the ship, but many did. Those who did were pleased with their experience and many plan to do it again. It's also working for Holland America. I spoke with a representative from the company this week. He affirmed the program has established a good footing and is working as intended for them. So why change it? Well, there's two likely reasons. The experience of one of our subscribers from San Diego will illustrate this first. The $49 rate was for whatever cabin was left on the ship, be it inside, ocean view, or balcony. Hal will do what they can to upgrade regular guests first, but it may be that a balcony cabin is the one left. That makes this deal spectacular for the cruiser, a little less so for Hal. But it could be, as in the case of our subscriber, that both balcony and non-balcony cabins are available for the standby passengers. Holland America's solution to this, which wasn't advertised, was to assign the standby cruiser an inside cabin, then offer the chance to upgrade to a balcony for a nominal fee. Now remember, this is happening last minute, in this case two days before embarkation, and there may be other people in line. This means there's a lot of last minute juggling, especially if there's multiple standby passengers. So the second possible reason from Holland America's perspective is that there are many cruise passengers who might consider this type of program, but are afraid of the stateroom they might be assigned. Not everybody's willing to stay in an inside room. Holland America stepped in to solve both problems at the same time. So there's now two standby rates. The original $49 per day rate is still intact, but it applies now only to inside or ocean view staterooms. And a new $79 per day rate applies to balcony rooms. In effect, this appears to create two different lines for people waiting to get on a cruise. One for the balcony cabins and another for the non-balcony. All easy, right? Not so fast. First, it's not as simple as two lines. Hal has decided that people who pay the $79 rate will be assigned a balcony cabin if one's available. But if not, and an inside cabin's available, they'll be offered the inside room and have their rate adjusted back to the $49. If they don't want that, they can just get the $79 rate refunded and walk away. So the higher rate increases the quality of the room and the chances that you'll board the ship. What about all the people like us who are already in line and have been for months? Could we upgrade to the $79 rate? If we do, will our place in line be based on the original date we signed up 
or on the date we upgraded. Third, there's a few house ships that don't have regular balconies. The Vola Dam, for instance, has only mini suites. Does a $79 rate apply to mini suites? Finally, there's cruise insurance and have it all package, and how are they affected by these changes? To make sure I had the best information on the full effect of the changes, particularly to people who've already booked, I reached out to a 10 year specialist at Holland America in Seattle for answers, and what I'm giving you is based on his response. Let's take the issues in order. One, switching rates. The good answer is yes. If you want to change to the new rate, and you're already at the $49 rate, you can do so by contacting whoever you booked the trip with in the first place, either Hal or your travel agent. You're going to be asked to pay the $30 per person difference. And we've been assured that you'll maintain your original place in line. So what that means is that what looked like two lines is really one line with two kinds of people in it. This is significant. Two, what about mini suites? For the purpose of this program, Hal is treating mini suites like balconies. This is significant also. Three, what about other fees? If they assign you a standby cabin and you don't take it, you stand to lose all your money. For that reason, some people purchase Hal Platinum Cruise Insurance to recoup possible unforeseen costs in case they can't make the ship. Changing the fare may or may not change the price of cruise insurance. For two of us, changing the fare on a 42-day cruise would raise the price over $2,500. That would move us into a new insurance pricing tier that you have to consider as well as the price of the uh, increased price of the cabin. But for a seven-day cruise, the change is only $420 and you'd likely not change anything. So the answer is, does it change your insurance? It depends. The have it all promotion is cheaper if you book it ahead of the cruise and payable at the time of booking. So you could go ahead and build this into your booking from the beginning, but that means you're tying up all the money for something that you may not use. But if you trust yourself to remember to do this last minute, you could wait until you have confirmation that you're indeed getting on the ship. That way your money is not tied up with Holland America refund process in the event you're not able to board. In the end, I think the change that Hal made is a smart one. Even though the short-term effect is to reduce the number of cabins we qualify for on the cruises that we've booked thus far. Do you agree that this is a good change? Leave a comment below. If I didn't address some question that you have, please leave it there as well and I'll get you an answer. If you like the content of this video and you're interested in more, please subscribe to our channel. We normally release a new video each week like this one about our last HAL sailing. Within the next month, you also should be able to check out our first standby experience because we sail in 16 days. Maybe. Until next time, safe travels.